Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Anil Patri. I'm from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. I'm going to be the chair of this session along with uh, my colleague Patrick Boisu. Um, so this is about the cooperation. We always talk about um, collaborations between countries, uh, between continents, um, between agencies, and uh, this US-EU Communities of Research was started with collaboration between the National Nanotechnology Initiative in US, um, the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office, it's called NNCO, so if you use acronyms, you know what they stand for, and the European Commission on the EU side, and so we have existing communities of research in different areas. There are seven of them. And then so we are starting a new communities of research in nanomedicine. And this is an excellent place. As you know, Clinam is a premier meeting in, um, in the nanomedicine area, clinical nanomedicine. And so we thought we would launch this here. Um, so to do that, we have the uh, really the leaders from both sides, from the U.S. and then uh, European Union. Um, so uh, Dr. Lisa Friedestorff, she's going to provide a historical background about the U.S.C.U. communities of research, the genesis, and, um, uh, and Lisa is the director of the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office, which coordinates all of nanotechnology in U.S. across all the governments all the agencies and then reports to the White House of office. So, and then she's followed by uh, Heiko Freema. He's a research program officer. Again, he oversees all the nanomedicine funding in the European Commission. Uh, so he's going to follow uh, Lisa. Lisa, thank you. Great. Well, I'm so excited to be here launching this new core. Um, it's been an absolutely fabulous meeting. Uh, it's my first time at ClinAm, and it has been amazing. I've learned so much um, the last couple of days. So I just wanted to provide a little bit of context for what a community of research is. Um, so um, the US-EU cores um, were established uh, about six years ago. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, but for context, Where's my, my, where am I aiming? Yeah, it, I, but I don't know where to aim it. Oh, it's not working. Can I just nod at you and you can, Click. there's only, there's only a couple. A wheel, so turn the wheel. So just for context, I, I was told it might be helpful to tell you a little bit about the NNI for those of you who, who might not be aware of it. Um, in the US, um, the, you can go to the next slide. Perfect. So um, the NNI was established uh, about 18 years ago, um, and it's a, a, an initiative um, where there's cooperation across 20 different agencies. And the four goals of the, the NNI um, have remained steady all of these years are to advance world-class research, foster the transfer of that research into commercial activity, develop um, an infrastructure, and this infrastructure includes the physical infrastructure, the human research infrastructure, so talking about the development of, of workforce and those types of things. And, and more recently, I think that we've, we've learned how important it is to also consider the cyber um, infrastructure, so the ability to, to share data, develop um, models and simulation. And um, the fourth goal has, has been um, very important from the very beginning, which is the responsible development. And this is where all of our environmental health and safety aspects of nanotechnology are really coordinated together. Um, you can see the alphabet soup that makes up the US government. 
Um, but you know, pick your favorite agency, FDA perhaps, or NIH, um, and, and they really um, come together under the NNI to um, collaborate um, and, and leverage resources. Um, all of the funding is done by the agencies, not, there's no single pot of money, it's all done by the agencies, and that's a very important part of um, how we operate, and that, that certainly comes up when we talk about collaborating on projects, for instance, across the U.S. and the EU. So, so there are currently, as, um, as Anil said, there's currently seven communities of research, and these have evolved a little bit over time. Um, they were first proposed in a meeting in the U.S. in 2011, and then they were um, launched at a US EU meeting in Finland in 2012. So these are the, the current um, uh, areas um, under the um, environmental health and safety communities of research. Um, Anil leads the characterization um, core. Each core has a US lead and an EU lead. Um, and then I just, I, I, I picked a bridge to show the bridging. Um, Slides. Um, the London Bridge, but I decided to update that with a <laughs> with a gold bridge. Um, so, so what do the cores do? Um, the the intent of these communities are really to bring researchers together to collaborate, um, especially from the U.S. side. As as Anil noted yesterday, there's no dedicated funding for this. It's really, uh, so it's not a funding program. It's really an opportunity to um, facilitate conversation. And what the researchers do um, depends on them. It depends on the, the co-chairs. It depends on um, the, the folks who are engaged in the activity, what it is that they want to do to advance um, their area. So I, I pulled out a few examples of um, some of the things that have uh, occurred under the, the core mechanism. So there have been um, workshops and webinars that have been organized by the groups. Um, they've uh, prepared uh, peer-reviewed uh, papers together. Um, there's a whole series of curation um, white papers that were developed by one of the cores. Um, both the, the US and the, the EU participants in um, the databases core worked on the nanoinformatics roadmap. Um, and then, in, in my view, one of the most important things that's happened um, through the, the interactions of the cores has been the agreement by, by the US researchers and the EU researchers to use a common format for storing their data. So they have agreed to use ISOTAB Nano as um, you know the, the definition of what data gets saved, the metadata, how it is saved, so that they can better share that. And, and there was a database in the US that was stood up several years ago. Um, it was improved upon by, by Duke, and, and they really um, looked at curating data and, and did a bit of a pilot, um, which has now moved on into the EU, which I think is um, your observatory. Um, and, and both the US and the EU researchers are putting their data into that database so that they can more easily share that information um, and advance their, their knowledge. So with that, um, I think this was intended to just give you a sense of what some of the other communities have done. Um, we've already set up an alias um, for, for those of you who, who might be interested in um, in participating to get on the distribution list. That's uh, nanomedcore at nnco.nano.gov. We'll be talking about that more later, I'm sure. Um, but that way, if you're interested, we'll, we'll have a way to you know, connect you with the group um, until we get a, a website stood up and all of that type of thing. So, um, and, and we just wanted to, to share some of the, you know, some of the ongoing collaboration between the, the U.S. and the EU, and I'll, I'll turn it over Right, to so thank you. Yeah, so it's a, a pleasure to speak here at the start of this new community of research for nanomedicine. 
Um, well, it, uh, it fits very well in the uh, science and technology cooperation agreement of the European Union with the USA. And um, it builds on uh, much earlier work that the EU has done uh, with the USA already since the, uh, the early days of the National Nanotechnology Initiative in, in 2000. Uh, there were work combined uh, working groups of U.S. and EU researchers who came together to discuss uh, about the future potential of, uh, of nanotechnology. So I, I think that it's good to, to see that much of all these provisions have actually come out and, and are maturing still, but uh, they're, they're on the right way. Um, well, then um, there is... Um, more recently, a, a very strong cooperation in the field of uh, nano safety research, where the EU and US and other international researchers uh, work together to, to put their, their forces together and, and get results more easily. Um, and a practical results is then, for instance, that the data that are collected uh, by researchers are actually uh, stored in a database so that they can be used, that will be an open database. This uh, open data aspect is, is very important nowadays uh, for the EU policy to, to make sure that data that are uh, obtained by researchers using tax uh, funding from the taxpayers uh, is actually made available as far as it doesn't hinder at least the, the commercial interest and, and the IPR protection, but to, to make sure that as much as possible data is reliable data, fulfills standards, that you can look up what it is and that it's made available. Transparency is very important and openness. These are new guidelines, strong guidelines. Well, they're not new, but they're reinforced, I would say. Also, open access to publications is, is part of this. Stimulate open access to publications. Well, nano safety is an excellent area for that, for this co for that kind of cooperation because there are no strong commercial interests involved. Um, but also, okay, now for, for nano medicine, we already have established a strong cooperation with the setup of the EU NCLs in several years. Uh, the EU NCL was set up uh, with strong help from uh, the US NCL, and Scott McNeil has done very much work for that. He uh, traveled many times to the EU and he met many researchers, and he met us also in Brussels to talk about the, the NCL, the, the need for nano characterization, and, and he helped a lot to set that up. And so the result is that nowadays the US NCL is, is actually uh, a partner in the EU NCL. Well, uh, looking a bit more towards the future, um, well, the, we've heard here in the CleanArm conference, everyone in the nano medicine community globally. Uh, wants to get all these technologies, products, therapies to the market. That is the priority. Well, the markets are global, so uh, we need to have global cooperation for regulation. And uh, also the, the access of the EU and the US is, is very strong for the cooperation in pharmaceuticals and medical technologies. So there is also a lot of opportunities there to cooperate and establish new standards, especially to get the trade going and you know, to, to make sure that companies in one uh, country can easily sell, or easily, but can sell their, their products also in other countries of the world so, so that we avoid loss of time you know, and, and get better results sooner. So, um, well, for the rest, Lisa has already explained what the core is and, and how it functions. There are many possibilities. So your imagination is, is the limit, so to say. Um, so I would uh, say much success with the new community of research for nanomedicine. Thank you. So questions from audience. We have a few minutes. Ah, now it's on. Yes. 
Sorry. Um, a, a question. Is there also a mechanism for cooperation between the cores? Yes. Yes. Um, yes, there is. So um, we bring together the, the cores uh, once a year in a, a meeting that, that alternates between the U.S. and the EU. Thanks for reminding me. The, the next one is October 11 and 12th in D.C. Um, next year it'll be in the EU. Um, but at that meeting, all the cores come together. And um, we think that there's really nice synergy between especially the, the nanotox um, activities and nanomedicine. And, and certainly, you're all welcome to, to come to that meeting as well. Um, but be, because there's not dedicated funds, as we mentioned, um, we're also looking at how to um, align at meetings where people are already gathered, like this. Um, I think that uh, we'd like to have more U U.S. participants, um, but the crosstalk between the cores, I think, is also very important. Thank you. I was hoping exactly for that answer, especially between nano safety and nano medicine. Absolutely. It's very important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You want to add to that? Any comments? Uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I agree strongly. Yeah, there have been questions about, there's always questions about the relation between nano safety and nano medicine. Uh, you know, and people wonder, okay, what, what is the difference? How do they cooperate? Uh, actually, okay, the two environments are different. One is exposure, pollution, and so on. The other is controlled release. So for people who are ill, so the, the context is very different. But a lot of the methods of studying the interaction of particles, nanoparticles, with living cells are the same. So a lot of the instrumentation that is used is the same. But the laboratory will be different, probably, because it's, one is a, a medical laboratory and, and the other is more maybe for you know, protection of, of workers, for instance, and, and, uh, and protection of the environment. So, but they can share quite a lot of results. And if that happens, of course, and it, I think it's already happening because many of the laboratories here in Europe, for instance, um, they, they also have, they are doing both. So the same people could be involved in, in both EHS and nanomedicine, and, and they're never far apart. But it, it's good to, to also look at a standardization of methods and, and to see if the same methods can be used in, in the two, uh, two, two contexts, for instance. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Um, I have a question. Uh, last year, the new medical device regulation was published. And uh, for the first time, the nanomaterial was regulated in, for the European. I was wondering if you were involved in the, in the preparation of the draft uh, of the finalization of this regulation based on your uh, research and... Ah, yeah, so no, the, the regulation, uh, that has been approved. So the, the yes, regulation exactly, is approved, yeah. and nanomaterials is a particular attention item in that. So that, you know, if it gets into the body, then you need to be extra careful. Uh, but anyway, it's in reality not so much different because anyway, the medical devices need to be safe. Uh, Whether na nanomaterial or another material, they need to be safe. But nanomaterials is particularly mentioned. So, but the work that is done, for instance, in the nano safety cluster and the nano medicine cluster, of course, can help to to certify that you know, those new instruments and medical devices will be safe. And a lot of work has been done nowadays. It's, it's not too difficult to tell, for instance, for the new nanoparticles. It's feasible in a rather reliable way to, to say what if it's toxic or not and what toxici toxicities there are. So, but this is, of course, developing more, this whole area. Is that clear? But uh, yes, I was wondering if, if you have been consulted, have you been approached by the uh, European Commission for the preparation of this? I was just wondering because you are the more expert person, is why I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah, many many groups have been involved in that. It's a huge process. Uh, this started in 2012 after the PIP scandal, 
So our department has been also involved in that, experts have been involved in that, the European Parliament, different groups. Um, so th that, that is a huge process where many experts and, and groups have been involved in, in before the, 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 the regulation was finally approved. Yeah. Okay, what, what I wanted to know, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Heiko. Thank you, Lisa, uh, for providing the historical perspective of the genesis of uh, uh, USCU core.